Hello everybody. I just want to tell you a few things that I remember. The time uh, and afterwards when the Germans left Limnos. I remember very well, I was six years old. It was October 1944. I remember very well, I was six years old and uh, I remember that that, day, that night I think it was a couple nights, we did not go inside the house, we stayed outside because as they were leaving, they were exploiting all the bombs and the munition they had left behind and uh, it was, uh, the houses were shaking and uh, I, I remember a couple of windows that we had, the, the, the pane glass was broken and also I remember that they had an oil uh, tanker in the Gulf of Mudros and they put it on fire and we could see the smoke it was for about a week, I don't know, it seemed to be forever and at night we could see the flames coming out of them. Uh, you know, uh, as they came, when they came, nobody stopped them from coming in. There were no soldiers uh, on the island and when they left, nobody pushed them out because there were no soldiers on the island at all. Uh, all the soldiers and uh, whatever they, they, they were doing uh, was in the mainland. It was the same time that they also left from uh, Athens. You know, when they were there, they had dug tunnels inside the, the hills all around and in there, they would store uh, the food. They also store all the ammunition. Of course, the tunnels were dug by the locals. Uh, and I remember my father used to go over there in the morning. They would come and say, you go, and you and you and you, you go. And uh, sometimes they would pay, they would not pay him money, but they would give him some food. I remember my father was bringing uh, dark, very dark, a couple slices or maybe a piece of, of uh, bread and marmalade. And that was, that was a treat. And sometimes that's all we had to eat. Anyway, <clears throat> as soon as they left, uh, the last one left, uh, I don't know when, but uh, everybody from the villages, they run into the tunnels to see what they left behind, what they could get. I remember one thing my uncle uh, from my mother's side and my father, they went in and I remember they brought back uh, uh, sacks of uh, uh, sticks of uh, powder, uh, dynamite, sticks of dynamite. And they were the size and a little bit bigger than the stick of chewing gum. And they looked like that. They were wrapped around in a circle and like this all around with string and they were in sacks that they were, the sacks were cotton and uh, they, I remember the color, it was turquoise color. I don't know how many they brought out, but um, th those uh, dynamite sticks, we used them like matches to start fires. You had to just take it and rub it like that quickly and hard on a rough surface and it will ignite. We also, the kids, I remember we would take him and, and, and cut him in small pieces with a hammer or with a rock. We hit it and explode and make the, like a firecracker noise and a little, little spark. I was our entertainment. The sacks, my mother cut them and uh, she made clothes out of them. Uh, she made underwear and other, what other things, skirts. She, she made all that from that material. But you know, when they left, they had mined all the beaches all from the island especially in our side, 
Ayermoles, the sand beach, and the Cozinas, uh, they were all mined, so, uh, were landmines. And I uh, remember they didn't, I don't remember when they came to the country, the government came to clean them out, but uh, I remember very vividly uh, that whenever we heard an explosion, because we could hear it, most time we were running to the Cabanario to uh, get in line to start ringing the bell that somebody got killed. What was happening that uh, young men, they would go and uh, try to take the, the, uh, uh, the, the powder or the, the gun powder out of there and make hand grenades. And then they would go to the shore uh, in the evening or at night and put a light on and have fish come around and then they will throw the hand grenade, hand grenade in the fish and kill him and pick him up. But of course they had two chances to get hurt. The first one was trying to get the, uh, the landmine out without exploding. And the second one was trying to throw the hand grenade. You throw it uh, before it's ready, it doesn't do anything. You hold it long enough and you lose your hand and you lose your head too. And also, you know, I remember we could tell the difference of the sound, whether it was something happened at the minefield or something happened in the shore. I know of two, two boys, they were older than me, that they got killed. Oh, it was horrible. One of them was horrible. His father went to the, to the shores of Ayarmola and he has baskets on the, dosk, uh, on the donkey, big baskets, and that's, he brought them into baskets. Oh, horrible thought. Anyway, the other thing was happening was, uh, of course, nobody was going over there and the grass was uh, higher and sometimes the animals would walk in there and then explode. Anyway, I don't know when was uh, the government came and took them all out. I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> anyway, so, but uh, right after, <clears throat> after the Germans left, of course, the, uh, when, when uh, uh, the leaders, the allies, uh, Churchill and Stalin and, and uh, Roosevelt got the day, got together at uh, Potsdam to divide Europe. Uh, Churchill said you can have all the Balkans in that area, Albania, Yugoslavia, uh, Bulgaria, uh, Romania, but Greece, it has to remain with us. So Greece was kind of given to the Americans. And uh, I know that uh, uh, they came, the Americans came with a Marshall Plan that was giving money and assistance to the Greeks. But at the same time, the communists in Greece, they went up the, the mountains and we had a civil war. Uh, in the island, we didn't have the civil war we have a division of the villages. The villages. Uh, there were the communists, and I remember even I was kids. We didn't know what was going on, but if we meet each other, you had to show you were you a communist or you were the other kind. And the the thing was the communists. I think were oh, the communists were like this, and the other guys were like that. There was so I am, and I don't remember what thing. So. Even the children were divided, you know, and uh, you, you had a family that was divided. It was brother killing brother uh, because they wanted to be communists. Now, the other thing was happening, I remember, was a pedomazoma. 
pedomasma means the gathering of the children. The andartes, they call them, the, uh, the insurgents are the andartes. They would go at the villages, even their own village, at night, and they knew where the children were, and they will go and say, we're going to take your son, or you're going to take your girl. And they take him, and they will march him at night through the mountains, and uh, they brought him over to Romania or Bulgaria, and we know we have a friend. She's my age, and she was seven years old when they went into her house at night, broke the door, said, we want to take your daughter. She was the youngest kid. The other boys, they didn't take the boys, they took the girl. And she described some of the horrible stuff that they suffer walking at night uh, and hiding during the day in, in oh, horrible things. And they took her to Romania. And when she was 14 years old, the Red Cross came. Uh, I don't know what, uh, what they had. The Red Cross came and they brought her back to, to uh, her village. And eventually she came to America. And they were saying that you can't, and it was kind of true, you can't feed your kids. Therefore, we're going to take care of them and uh, later on bring them back. But the idea was they're going to bring him as communists and uh, bear arms against the government. That was, that was the deal. So anyway, and uh, of course the communists uh, in, in uh, Athens, when they were very active, they were sent them in, ex in exile. Uh, we didn't have, we had a hospital, but the island next to us, Ayos Estratios, it's kind of a barren island, and they would put him over there. Some of the uh, people that brought for the exile, and if they get sick, they bring them to uh, to Limnos. Uh, there's a big island uh, next to Lavrio, right? Because which is a barren island. There are no people over there even now. They used to put him over there, uh, and he was uh, it was bad. Anyway, but afterwards, I can't remember when the year was, about 1950, when the, uh, the Andartas, the Sanzo were defeated, and uh, the things started to be a little normal. Uh, they had given the, the communists, they had the, the Communist Party, they had a, 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 a man in Mirina, and he would go around the villages and ask him to sign a piece of paper saying that we're communists. And his, uh, his spiel was, you know, guys, you see all this uh, land that belonged to only one guy or two guys? We're going to cut it in pieces, and you're going to have some of that land. Of course, people would okay with sign. But then, as I said, 1950, 52, uh, they came around and said, okay, whoever thinks that he made a mistake to be a communist, you can write this piece of paper, this, the sign, this piece of paper, uh, and it says, you are sorry. Uh, Metanius says, you are sorry, and you're okay. And as soon as Canada and Australia and South Africa opened up for immigrants, they were able to leave the country. Some of them who didn't sign, they wouldn't go anywhere. As a matter of fact, I remember one guy that he was so much communist that uh, he stayed and died living as a poor man. Uh, anyway, well, so I remember we were going to school at that time and uh, the Americans had sent us some uh, food sent us, I don't know how it got to us, but uh, at the school they sent us powdered milk. And I remember there would, uh, some women, they boil the water and drop it in there, and it was yucky stuff. Also, they, they gave us some uh, American cheese, yellow cheese. Of course, we are used to 
to uh, uh, feta cheese with salt and that. And it was, it was stale, it was old, moldy. Of course, nobody ate that. But also they sent us um, vitamins. Cut liver, little, little uh, uh, pills, or pills, whatever it was, it was full of cut liver. And I remember I was uh, probably maybe 10 years old or maybe eight years, nine years old, I remember. That was my job to get the little guys, the little children, uh, to open their mouth wide open and I'll throw one of those things into the mouth, the bottom of the, the back of the mouth so we wouldn't be able to chew it because if they chew them, they'll throw up. So I remember that job. I remember one time they sent us a package that had toys in there, different things. And I remember they, um, uh, they had the assigned numbers to each item on this package and then they gave us to pull numbers out of out of a, uh, a box and I remember I got the number 42 and that 42 belonged to a uh, a little ball it was pink ball that could bounce that was the first first ball that I ever had or we had in, in that city that would bounce because most of we were playing with the balls that were made with with um, uh, material. My mother used to sew them together, get get many of them with material uh, leftovers and bundle them together, and, and then put a cover on it and sew it together. That was our ball, and that's what we used to play soccer with and all the other stuff. Anyway, I remember that, and I thought all the time that number forty-two was my lucky number. And I always think about my lucky number of 42. <laughs> anyway, didn't, I don't know. That's what I thought for years, even now. When somebody uh, comes to number, lucky number, I say 42, just comes out like that. Of course, yeah, I didn't get anything more than the ball, but it was a present for life. Yeah. We used that ball a lot of playing soccer. Like, Anyway, that is the things that I remember uh, after the Germans left. I enjoyed telling you this story. Okay, bye-bye everybody, love you all, bye.